Welcome to the Global Oneness Summit, Transforming Our Lives Through Conscious Creativity. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Suzanne Giesman and Patricia Coto Robles, and we'll be talking about cosmic forces shaping a whole new future. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. <sighs> Yeah, so excited to be with you both. So today we're going to touch on cosmic forces, who we are, and recognize the truth of the oneness of our being, and then how we can enjoy the human experience and, and experience the universe as love. So let me share a little background on each of these incredible guests today. Suzanne Giesman is a teacher of personal transformation, an author. She's got four books that I'm aware of. Is that right? You've got Actually, four? 14. <laughs> 14. Okay. That's just how many were at the, okay. See, sorry about that. And a medium who has been recognized on the Watkins list of the hundred most spiritually influential living people, a former Navy commander with a master's degree in national security affairs. She served as a commanding officer and aide to the chairman of the joint chief of staff. She now shares the awakened way, a path to living a consciously connected and divinely guided life. She has authored 14 books, six best-selling Hemi-Sync recordings and YouTube videos reaching millions of viewers. She produces the Daily Way Inspirational Messages, the Awakened Way app, and hosts the top-ranking Messages of Hope podcast. And I had the pleasure of attending her workshop yesterday here in Denver, which was incredible. For more information about Suzanne and her work, you can visit her website at SuzanneGiesman.com. Patricia Coto Robles is an internationally known teacher and co-founder and president of the nonprofit educational organization, Era of Peace, which sponsors her work and the annual World Conference. Congress on Illumination. Patricia was a marriage and family counselor for 20 years. She now spends her time sharing the vitally important information she is receiving from the beings of light in the realms of the illuminated truth. This information from on high is distributed for free through Patricia's website, eraofpeace.org, in the form of monthly newsletters, weekly vlogs, video vlogs, webinars, as well as Facebook and Twitter postings. Patricia also shares the sacred knowledge through her many MP3, CDs, books, eBooks, and DVDs. Welcome, Suzanne and Patricia. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So I want to dive right in. How can we work with our higher consciousness to live our best life? Patricia, I'd love to hear from you. Well, that higher consciousness is always standing in readiness, waiting for our attention to focus on it. And unfortunately, when we began using our creative faculties of thought and feeling in ways that weren't based in love, we fell into denser and denser frequencies of vibration. So instead of that inner guidance and that inner voice being prevalent and available to us, it became what we called the still small voice within that was very hard to hear when there was so much clamor and discord in the outer world. But we're now in the midst of an unprecedented shift of consciousness. And because of this shift of consciousness, we are moving into higher and higher frequencies of vibration that is allowing that aspect of our God self, which I referred to in the beings of light, referred to as the I am presence, the divinity within each of us. This aspect of our divinity is integrating in new ways that we now can hear more clearly as that intuitive inner guidance. So the most important thing in order to reconnect with that inner knowing is to pay attention because the guidance from that higher self is with us all the time. 
it's that intuitive inner knowing we maybe used to call it our conscience or you know seeing the angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other shoulder which kind of reflected the difference between our higher divine guidance and the fragmented fear-based consciousness of our human egos but when we ask and when we bring that aspect of us in to our heart flame and ask for divine guidance and then take the time to sit and be quiet and to listen we will get that inner guidance and the more we practice on that the more we will get it during all aspects of our life we won't necessarily have to be sitting in silence to hear it it will be coming through as this intuitive inner guidance through all of our thoughts, words, actions, and feelings once we consciously invoke it and give it permission to be there in a very tangible way. Mm. Yeah, that's so inspiring. What do you think about that, Suzanne? Well, what it, Patricia said, or, you know, that's not a matter of I think about it. I feel it in my heart as truth. It's absolutely okay. correct. And she knows this, and we know this as truth. Uh, the challenge is that we in human form are so attracted by the objective world. I'm in a room where there are so many pictures and books on the shelves and interesting things to look at. And we get caught up in that, like being in a movie theater. But when we understand that we are not only human, we realize that we can metaphorically step onto the balcony and observe our human self going through life like an actor on a stage. The challenge is when we become like a method actor who forgets they're acting out a role. So taking frequent breaks throughout the day to metaphorically sit on the balcony and have the soul's more expanded view from the bigger picture gives us a sense of peace. But we have to remember to do that. Like Patricia said, we can set the intention of being present and perhaps meditating but i've found it very practical to have little reminders around my house have to check in with higher consciousness to remember that i'm a soul and communicate from that soul's viewpoint so it could be as simple as putting a little uh, let's call it a tchotchke some little some little doodad that you sit next to the sink where you brush your teeth twice a day and those there's two times a day right away that you're saying oh have i have i stepped into the balcony and had the bigger perspective of the soul or what if you were to wear a special wristband or move your ring from the right hand to the left every other day so that it feels a little different and you say oh that's right it's my reminder to stop and pause and be present so these frequent breaks get us out of the human habit of being solely in this reality awareness. Mm, I, I love that. Th those are great tips. And that concept that you brought up of being the observer, do we have to leave our body? I know some people will leave their body to oversee, like look higher, even astro travel. Do Can we do that um, just in our mind? Or what do you think about that? My understanding is that we actually don't leave the body when even when we astral travel everything is an experience within consciousness within awareness the body itself is an experience within consciousness in your dreams you don't go somewhere you may seem to be traveling but it's all arising within awareness which exists beyond space time so it's not a geographic experience it's mm. actually an expanded experience or a non-ordinary state of consciousness that gives us the appearance of traveling. So it may, some people may actually feel like you're traveling and visiting other places and your experience is that, but at a different level from a different perspective, there is only one mind, one consciousness, and all of these experiences are happening in the only here and now that exists. Mm, that's interesting. I like that perspective. Patricia, did you have anything to add to that in talking about being the observer of your life, going outside and looking at the big picture? 
Well, I agree with what Suzanne said completely. We are truly multidimensional beings, and there's no such thing as the soul being unconscious. But so when we lay our body down to rest and to sleep, there's a level of consciousness that gives us the peace to sleep. But we connect then with that higher aspect of our multidimensional selves, and we can project our consciousness anywhere, you know. And what we're learning, which is really I think important for us to understand as we connect with the latent abilities that are within us that we've been that have been dormant for so long is that you know our science talks about uh, light years and the travel of time and the travel of light and the travel of speed but in consciousness is instantaneous so we can in projected consciousness be in other realms, in other frequencies, certainly watching everything that's going on in our own life, but also projected into the inner temples in the realms of light or even to other systems of worlds where we're observing. And I know that sounds kind of woo-woo at this time, but it's not, it's real. And we're becoming more and more aware of that. So this connection doesn't take all of these supernatural things that we thought were so far out and just for certain people that had certain gifts or whatever we're really connecting with the multi-dimensionality of who we are and we're going to be doing awesome things that we've never even dared to dream of oh that's exciting <laughs> wow it, it, and why do you feel like that do you feel Patricia, that Earth is awakening and everything is aligning for us. Are we all awakening ourselves to those abilities? I absolutely think that, and I am aware of that. I've been around for a very long time, so I've been doing this for literally decades. And I realize this isn't something that's just magically happened, that literally everybody whether they're aware of it yet or not are in the that are in the physical plane are have come here because we've been preparing for a very long time to assist in this unprecedented shift of consciousness and what the beings of light have said is never has a planet that's fallen to this depth of discord and negativity been given the opportunity to move into the light at this accelerated pace and so we are here not because we're special or unique or more evolved than our sisters and brothers in other systems of worlds. We're here because we've agreed to work our tails off to get this done. And <laughs> just like what's going on with humanity's team, there are literally legions of people on this planet that have been working for decades and are beginning to awaken with the new Last year, our World Congress was dedicated to a generational changing of the guard, which is really happening where the, the young people, Gen Z and the millennials and the children and the younger people are beginning to wake up in ways that they are going to be literally fulfilling their higher aspects. And so this is a natural part of our process. It's not just becoming... Uh, happening by accident it's because for centuries now there have been powerful people and embodiment who have worked very hard to allow this to occur at this time and now we're all here to experience it and i'll just mention this the beings of light told me this decades ago which is just i know it's so hard to believe that when we look at outer world appearances but they have said beyond a shadow of a doubt, the greatest privilege and honor of any soul in any level of embodiment in any system of worlds is physical embodiment on planet Earth during this cosmic shift of the ages that we're experiencing. So we are really blessed beyond our comprehension to be able to work in this way, just like all the wonderful legions of light that will be participating 
in the global oneness summit you know this is a really powerful time and just very quickly i'd like to mention you know so many shifts of energy and vibration have gone on on and regardless of what our outer world beliefs are about COVID or whatever what what did happen multi-dimensionally was what the beings of light referred to as a planetary pause that just allowed the stillness in the outer world because everybody had to stop doing what they were doing it allowed the i am presence to integrate and communicate in ways that we have not experienced and so there have been really powerful shifts of energy vibration and consciousness so we can withstand more light so powerful influxes of this light occurs with certain planetary alignments equinoxes solstices eclipses and that kind of thing and i just want to mention that this earth summit is being held in the embrace of a very uh powerful uh, eclipse series and there's a powerful solar eclipse that occurs on October 14th or occurred on October 14th and when uh, the lunar eclipse will be on the 28th so throughout the whole summit we're going to be experiencing all this powerful influx of light mm, thank you so much for sharing and it really resonated with me what you're saying about what the beings of light said that absolutely the greatest gift is to be embodied on the earth right now so i just you know everybody take a deep breath in for a moment take that in feel that gratitude and release and suzanne i know your whole branding the awakened way what was your inspiration did you want to help people to become awake to their abilities that is an outcropping of the awakened way the inspiration for the awakened way was a visit from a young man whose nickname was wolf who came to me after i met his parents surprised by my story because their son was killed the same way my stepdaughter was struck by lightning that is incredible yes what and, a synchronicity and i i want to share with you i rarely state this but i see lightning as this beautiful symbol of who we are there's if you look at a lightning bolt it starts with one point and then it comes down in fractals that it, it just divides so this one light divides into higher beings and then and those beings birth other beings so we humans is a metaphor but there's a lot to it, or just this condensed representation of that same light. And we're tapping into helpful beings at higher levels who also arise from that same light. But Wolf came to me when I agreed to do a mediumship reading for his parents. He dropped in on me the day before the session with all kinds of evidence that it was really him. He's the most powerful soul that I had brought through at that point. And he left proof that we are souls. I tell it in my book, Wolf's Message, the, the evidence that he left before he passed that he knew he would be killed by lightning. He knew exactly the spot where it would happen and when it would happen and what his parents would do in the aftermath. He drew pictures of it, left words about it, just points exactly to what Patricia and I know that we are not only these limited human beings. So the things that he shared with me in this unexpected drop in before his reading and during the reading led to a profound message about who we really are. And that became my teaching, The Awakened Way, which really boils down to three simple principles. Number one, you are not only human. So if we're not only human, I'm not saying we're ETs. ETs are expressions of this same one light, but in the human lineage, we are also souls, this expanded consciousness. So what does that mean for all of us? What do we do if we're not only human? We know that we are not alone. We can tap into our higher selves, the soul level, and live from that place. Wolf's main message is we as a species have been out of balance. Too much in the head, and not enough in the heart. And he also showed that, just as Patricia knows, our entire solar system is coming into alignment with the center of 
the galaxy. And I don't know a lot about astronomy. I know Patricia can speak to the planetary alignments much more, but the energy really is shifting at multiple levels. The second principle of the awakened way that came about because of my encounters with Wolf is that we are part of one big web connecting all that is, not just here in physical form, but across realities, across worlds and universes. Everything is connected. And when you start noticing the connections, your own consciousness expands. You see the connections with others. You care more about them. We come more from the heart. And the third principle of living the awakened way is that the healing and creative force with a capital F of the universe is love. I, I wanted to comment while uh, Patricia was giving her hope-filled message for all of us that so many YouTube videos this day that bring in channelers, that bring in people that are spiritual, capture people's attention with these doom and gloom titles and these forecasts that, that watch out, look about, look out for what's coming. Mm -hmm. And I love that Patricia is speaking positively because that's what my guides are saying as well. And we know that fear speaks to the human aspect of us, but the soul knows that we have good reason to remain hopeful. We're here to do a task. And when we come from the heart, we're right on mission. Right, Patricia? Absolutely. Absolutely. The um, just this is a side note, but it's, you mentioned this about Wolf saying he had left the body. That was such a, a comforting thing for me. And I know that a lot of people experience that in my counseling when uh, the beings of light revealed that is that that is very normal that at the moment of trauma or impact, whether it's a murder, whether it's a car accident, whatever, that the soul actually leaves the body before the horrific trauma to the body. And so that's why after car accidents, you know, they're interviewing the patient and they don't remember the actual accident or they don't remember exactly when the robber broke into their house, what happened after that. Because when they're in that traumatic situation the soul leaves the body so they don't experience all that all of that pain so that's that's a, a good thing yeah that's fascinating very interesting uh about the soul and death and and i agree with you suzanne about patricia being positive it really warmed my heart and both of you have such a positive message i think it just gives everyone hope that no matter what's going on in the world, we we have each other and we have our heart and, and the divine. So could I add something to that, Carissa? Yeah. That the tumult that we're experiencing, we can liken that to labor pains. Birth, <laughs> birth yeah. the new human. And the new human is one who is aware of who we are and has these the the Ancients call them SIDIs, S-I-D-D-H-I-S, the superpowers, which are available to all of us of clairvoyance, claircognizance, clairsentience, clairaudience. Knowing beyond the human senses is a natural ability that's been suppressed because of our focus on the external physical world. But this is part of what we're all stepping into and labor pains come with a lot of discomfort and we're experiencing that, but everything goes in cycles. So where we are now will be succeeded by wonderful things. Mm. Yes, absolutely. And those labor pains, like you're saying, they're for our good because they are helping us go even deeper and like having that contrast, we can rise even higher because it's almost like we have to, I, I have this like urgency, like, yes, well, we need I, I to wouldn't say we have to, it is the natural impulse of creation okay. to grow and devolve. So it, that comes with a feeling of, I have to do this, but that's, that's how that comes across to us. It's I see. Impulse. Mm, yeah, good point. That's good reframing. Well, I want to go into cosmic forces. First of all, what are cosmic forces, Suzanne? I, I want Patricia. I would love Patricia. Oh, you want to hear what Patricia has to say? Okay. <laughs> well, as 
Suzanne said, everything is interconnected and interrelated. And to the point, that's one of the things that if we can really get that, then it helps us have a greater level of responsibility of how we're using our precious gift of life, that electronic light that beats our heart, activates our brain that we receive with our prana, with our that's our life force. And when we say everything is interconnected, it literally means that every particle and wave of life throughout the whole of creation is experiencing everything. With every breath we take, whatever we are thinking or feeling or saying or expressing is either adding to the light of the world or it's adding to the chaos. And we have the ability to control what we're sending out by monitoring our thoughts, words, actions, and feelings. And the beings of light, the cosmic forces, are just from the very all-encompassing presence of our omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent, Father, Mother, God, all that is. Suzanne said, it's all based in love. The foundation of the all-encompassing divine matrix of our Father, Mother, God is love, the full momentum of our Father, Mother, God's divine love. And everything exists within that divine matrix. And so the cosmic beings, say the solar logos that control the suns beyond suns beyond suns, the beings of light associated with that, the mighty Elohim who are the builders of form, the directors of the earth, air, water, and fire elements, and all the beings associated with the elemental kingdom, the entire legions of cosmic beings from the greatest, most powerful beings of archangels and solar archangels and on, are all evolving aspects of our Father, Mother, God. And so the cosmic forces involve the collective consciousness of all of that divinity. For instance, ascended masters are sons and daughters of God that have normally evolved through various uh, earthly types of experiences that have evolved to a higher level. Our planet is the beings of light that, that are holding the creative space for our planet are Helios and Vesta, and they are in the system of the, uh, the um, central sun of Alpha and Omega. And Alpha and Omega is held in a larger aspect of central suns named Eloe and Eloa. And the one beyond that, that Eloe and Eloe belong to are El and Ala. So all of these systems of worlds, all of these beings of light are those forces. And each and every one of them are available to us through our invocation and by asking. And what I want to really stress is I know that one time I had someone who was talking to me about Jesus and they said they have so much, but they know how busy he is. So they don't want to impose on him by asking. <laughs> <laughs> to, to do something. The reality is these beings of light, all of us, even our higher I am presence, and as Suzanne reflects, that's the aspect of us that is our soul, is like a magnificent sun. And simultaneously, when we invoke light, say, from Jesus or Mother Mary or Buddha or Archangel Michael or any of the beings of light, they can project infinite rays of light into the heart flame of every person in the universe, in the whole of creation simultaneously and assist us simultaneously. So when I do invocations and I encourage people to do this, we invoke the entire company of heaven and the legions of light throughout infinity so that all of them that can assist in any way project their light and add to that light activity. So. We are powerful beyond our knowing because we are connected with one, with all of those beings of light. And when we say, for instance, I am my I am presence, and I am one with the I am presence of every man, woman, and child, instantaneously, 
our I am presence sends a ray of light into the heart flame of the I am presence of every person on earth, alerting them that someone is invoking light on their behalf and for them to stay at attention to receive that light. So we are powerful beyond we're knowing. And the I am presence will receive the light we are invoking and use it only in perfect alignment with that person's divine plan and their highest good. So it's impossible to interfere with anybody's divine plan or uh, cause them any problems by invoking light on their behalf because the I am presence is the director and guidance of how that light is used. I'm <laughs> just pausing for a moment yeah. because that was so interesting and powerful in talking also about the ascended masters. When I do healings, I Jesus and Buddha come in and, and I didn't really know what happened behind the scenes. And so <laughs> That's giving me a lot of insight and it's wonderful. And it's interesting because you say, oh, this person said they're too busy. Sometimes I feel their sense of humor and it surprises me. So that's been like a gift as well. You oh, know, Wonderful. Their sense of humor is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what about you, Suzanne? What did you think about what Patricia said and what are cosmic forces? I love that, that she has those decades of experience and I know she speaks truth. My path has been so grounded the first part of my life with that military background. And then with my stepdaughter's death 17 years ago, that's what started me to really look at what it's beyond our human awareness. And my left brain background really demanded of me that I ask for evidence that these higher beings exist. So on a practical basis, I sit with people and connect them with their loved ones who are in the astral realm, if we want to give it a name, who have recently left their bodies. And we can get verifiable evidence that they still, as expressions of the light of the soul, exist. So I decided to take it a step further and see, can we connect with these ascended masters? And I have received irrefutable evidence that we can speak to Jesus and to Buddha and to the ascended masters. I have videos about the, the verifiable, no nonsense evidence that I got when connecting with Archangel Michael and the military officer in, in the past would have said, Oh, this Archangel stuff. That's, that's the woo, woo you were talking about. This is ridiculous until I had a visit from a Norse God named Odin who told me things I couldn't possibly have who could not possibly have known, who conversed with me and told me things about my life that I didn't even know at that point. So who is that, I, by the way? Odin who connected was the all-father of the Norse gods. Right? Oh, okay. I said to him, this is what was so funny. I said to him, but you're a myth. And he, <laughs> without missing a beat, he said, you are a myth. <laughs> what is a myth but a story with perspective that tells that helps us in our lives here and all of us are living stories through of the one light so i simply stopped at archangels but my guides are disembodied beings and give me verifiable evidence all the time so i know that these beings of which patricia speaks are real or what is real it's Odin who told me anything that exists in consciousness and can provide healing and learning and growth is real. Experience is real. Is it helpful? So I know that these realms she speaks of are real. And I know that to limit ourselves to only that which we know and have personally experienced, mine has gone out like this to the realms of the, the archetypes and the ascended masters. But to speak of planetary levels and the beings that Patricia spoke of, that's new to me. I haven't personally experienced, but understanding that the one light of awareness is boundless and would not just jump from this, this intelligence beyond anything we could wrap our heads around to archangels, that it must be stepped up through these various 
cosmic forces. And I really look forward to interacting more with them in my journey as it unfolds. And I encourage everyone to at least be open to the possibility that you're not only human, you're a soul and so much more. So why limit ourselves when they are doing so much to help us awaken and heal each other? Mm. I just like to mention there too, that because I've been doing this for a very long time, I've connected with these beings and, and have been just like Suzanne said, but we don't need to know their names. You know, there are beings that are associated with every aspect of divinity. Like if we want healing, we invoke the legions of healing light and they will come. If we want divine love, if we want abundance, if we want uh, illumination, wisdom, all of the aspects of God are supported and expanded by all of these beings who have specialized in those different qualities and different things. And we will get to know them and they'll become more and more familiar to us. You know, the whole patriarchal consciousness of making us feel that anything other than Jesus uh, was the work of the devil or anything other than somebody that is famous for being that. So we've really been blocked from the, the having that open heart connection and that willingness. Certainly we need discernment and certainly we can um, uh, invoke the light, you know, cautiously, but always, all we have to do, as Suzanne has said, and I am reiterate, <clears throat> excuse me, is to go through the divinity of our I am presence and say through my highest level of consciousness or through my I am presence, I am invoking this on behalf of myself and humanity and the elemental kingdom and mother earth. You know, we can do it all simultaneously. We can be surrogates on behalf of every particle and wave of life. So it's really, we are powerful beyond our knowing and I just can't stress that enough you know we feel sometimes well i'm praying for this person to be healed but why not say i want this healing to be expanded through every single person on the planet that needs healing and it can be done through their i am presence just that easily mm, that's interesting so you're saying when you are working with one person or you want this one person to be healed, you can also heal humanity through your intention and in invocation. Right. It's as simple as saying, I am my I am presence and I am one with the I am presence of all humanity. What I invoke for myself, I invoke for all humanity in alignment with their highest good. And then their I am presence takes care of it. We don't have to figure out who on the planet needs that healing we're invoking. Their I am presence takes care of it. And probably at this stage, there isn't anybody on the planet that doesn't need some kind of healing. So <laughs> it'll be, a, it'll be a, a, a global event that happens. And it's really, I mean, that's not, it's just another expansion of what we already know. That's exactly the momentum of humanity's team and Global Oneness Day is us coming together with uh, a, a collective body of consciousness that is powerful enough and one of us is powerful enough, but the more we have is greatly exponentially expanded to really raise up every part of life on earth. And that's really what we're in the process of doing. And I just want to mention, you know, I know that sometimes when we look at the outer world, it, it looks like uh, everything is sometimes even looks like it's getting worse. But with the birthing pains, just like Suzanne was talking about, which is certainly the truth. Also, every electron of energy that we've ever used for any thought, word, action or feeling, which is our gift of life, we have the free will choice of how we're going to use it but we also have that a responsibility if we do. So if we've taken this precious gift of life and misqualified it into a gross mutation of hate or anger or fear, then that energy has to be transmuted. It's our responsibility to flood it with enough love that it transmute it back into that pure electronic light that we received. So as the light is increasing, 
it's pushing everything that conflicts with that light to the surface. And that's what we're seeing. We can easily see the garbage coming up in the outer world. What we can't see is the incredible light that's pushing it to the surface. So what we need to do with all of those maladies manifesting in the outer world, including the uh, shifts in weather and outer world natural disasters, is flood the light, flood the energy that has created it with love and light and ask that it be transmuted back into its original perfection. Mm, well, that's wonderful. And it felt like you were answering the next question I was going to ask. So I'll ask Suzanne, uh, with cosmic forces, how can they help shape a new future? They need our help. They're working as hard as they can. So how can they help? It's We really have to turn that question around. <laughs> You how can we have, use them to help us? Yeah. I mean, it's exactly what, what Patricia said. It's as each of us awakens to the power of that phrase that she used there. I am my I am presence. It's so powerful, yet it's so simple we overlook it. I had the the final, finally it sank in that I really am this I am. One day, just after brushing my teeth, I, it, it was, you know, people expect awakening to be this profound moment with bells and whistles and the sky parts. And I really just suddenly knew that the I am is looking through these eyes and your eyes and everybody who's watching the eyes. And when, when we speak, we're speaking on behalf of the I am presence within us. It's so constricted within these bodies and filtered by the brain. But when, as Patricia said, we invoke this presence to flow through us, whew, we can at least carry as much of it as these bodies will allow us to. And the forces are around us, and it is an adjustment physically to carry that higher energy. So some people may feel a little knocked off balance at times, but it's our task to work with these cosmic forces by allowing ourselves to really believe you mean i am the i am yes you are embrace that come from that place in all that you do and allow these cosmic forces to use you to be a force for good mm, i love that that's so inspiring i am going to start doing that <laughs> And then, you know, I'm taking it to a whole new level. Yes, just, Patricia. Just stand on that truth. Yes. Is that there's an expression that God needs a body. You know, if if God yeah. and the beings of light could have cleaned the mess we've made, we would have <laughs> done that. But we have free will and we've created okay. it. So we need to invoke the light of God. I see. And there's an expression that the call for assistance must come from the realm where the assistance is needed. And in order for the light of God to manifest in the physical plane, it has to be inbreathed into the divinity and the heart of people abiding in the physical plane. That's why we've all volunteered to be here, because God needed physical people to invoke this light in order to make these changes. I see. That's amazing. Well, when did you start receiving messages from beings of light, Patricia? Um, uh, Actually, when I was little, I think all of us have come into different experiences to work as a catalyst. And I tease about, I think mine was very, very unique. I am a volunteer to come into a dysfunctional family. I don't think anybody else has ever done that, but <laughs> sure. other than maybe 90% of the people on the planet. But I was in a difficult situation where there was a lot of fear. And from the time I was about as far back as I can remember, about three years old, there was this beautiful feminine presence with me that would tell me that I was going to be all right. And I didn't Aww. talk to anybody about her because I was afraid they could make her go away. So when I was about six years old, then um, my girlfriend in the neighborhood invited me to go with her and her family to church. And they were Catholics. My family was Methodist and not very religious. But my, I went to a Catholic church here in Tucson. And when I went in, there was this beautiful statue of Mother Mary. And I knew immediately that was this being of light that had been with me. And she told me that 
you know, what was going on in the outer world is not the way life is supposed to be and that we have the ability to change it. And that with my quest, we were going to find out how to do that. And then it just evolved from there. And I really didn't have any other tangible communication with individualized beings of light. I was always close to Jesus and Mother Mary. But um, until when it really began for me was in, in 1968, which is, you know, that was a year that's very similar to all the chaos that's going on right now. And they've even reported that over and over again, mm. that this major shift of consciousness of awakening and the anti-war movement that was going on and the civil rights and the women's rights and all of those kind of things, you know, um, that was we're back at the same place it looks like but we're not we're at a whole different level of that and it's going to be uh shifted to through a new level of consciousness that we are moving through now but that's when i really began um so about 60 years ago when i really began working with with those energies at, at that level that's wonderful. And would you be willing to bring in the beings of light to share a message or do an exercise? What feels good to you? I'll be glad to to do an exercise. Okay. Uh, this is, I think, you know, for the summit, as I said, there's all this wonderful light. We're being held in the embrace of this really powerful eclipse series that's going on and everything's shifting. So, uh, I would like to do uh, an activation uh, to help us bring in higher levels of oneness and unity consciousness, if that feels comfortable to you. Yes. Okay, and just breathing in deeply and going within to the divinity of our hearts. Today, as we join in consciousness with the myriad lightworkers around the world, who are preparing in the globe, Global Oneness Summit to add to the light of the world. The company of heaven will guide us through an activity of light that is specifically designed to assist the I am presence of every person on earth by accelerating our process of returning to oneness and unity consciousness. Please go within, and I will state this invocation in the first person so that we will each experience it personally. But know that together we are serving as surrogates on behalf of all humanity. And we begin. I am breathing in and out slowly and deeply. As I do, I gently close my eyes and go within to the secret place of the most high living God within my heart flame. There, I kneel before the altar of love and surrender my lower human consciousness to the perfection of my I am presence, which is my true God reality. Beloved Father, Mother, God, from your glorious heart, I was breathed into being as a consciously enlightened child. And into your loving heart one day when my learning experiences on earth are complete, I shall return as my I am presence grown to full stature. I thank you for the privilege of having life and for having a physical embodiment during this cosmic moment on earth, when the sons and daughters of God who fell from grace eons ago will reclaim the experience of returning to oneness and unity consciousness. Beloved Father, Mother God, thank you for allowing me and all of humanity to serve as instruments of God during this auspicious moment when our Mother God, the Holy Spirit, is reclaiming her rightful place of comprehensive divine love in every person's heart flame. 
I am deeply grateful to individually and collectively serve as a surrogate on behalf of all humanity. I now offer the cup of my consciousness as a holy grail through which the light of God will flow to ensure that every man, woman, and child on earth will victoriously reclaim oneness and unity consciousness through his or her own endeavors. Beloved Father, Mother, God, as I awaken into the enlightened state of unity consciousness, invest me with the power and love to magnetize and radiate forth every thought, feeling, word, action, belief, and memory I express with the divinity of my I am presence and the patterns of perfection for the fifth dimensional crystalline new earth. With this knowing, I now open my heart chakra to full breath. I am my I am presence, and I am one with the I am presence of all of humanity. What I invoke for myself this day, I invoke on behalf of every person on earth in perfect alignment with each one's divine plan and the highest good for all concerned. On the holy breath, I now breathe in and out deeply and rhythmically through my heart chakra. With every in-breath, I align with the divine love of my mother God and the sacred fire breath of the Holy Spirit. With every out breath, my mother God opens my heart chakra to new breaths and projects her comprehensive divine love into the physical plane of earth. Through this activity of light, the portal within my right brain hemisphere and my heart chakra, through which the love of my mother God originally flowed to bless all life on earth, is now open in ways I have not previously experienced. With every in-breath, my heart flame now ascends into new heights of divinity. And on each outbreath through my fully opened heart chakra, my heart flame becomes a stronger pulsation of my Father Mother God's power, love, enlightenment, oneness and unity consciousness in to the world of form. Because of this dual activity, my in-breath and out-breath, my heart flame becomes both a portal to the pure land of boundless splendor and infinite light within me, as well as the source of all of my Father, Mother, God's divine blessings to the world and all life evolving upon this sweet earth. My threefold flame is also the inward portal for my return to enlightenment, oneness, and unity consciousness. This means that through my holy breath, my return to oneness and unity consciousness and my inner journey back to my Father Mother God are balanced with my outer service to humanity and all life with every breath I take. It is within this balance that I open my heart chakra once again 
to the perpetual flow of God's oneness, enlightenment, and unity consciousness. And so it is, beloved, I am that I am. Feeling this activation secured within your heart flame and the heart flames of all humanity. Gently return your to consciousness to the room in breathing and exhaling and gently open your eyes. Thank you, Patricia. That was incredible. Um, feeling so much at peace. Thank you. And it feels, uh, you know, we, I want to transition to Suzanne. H how did you feel after that activation? Just, just beautiful. I, I love the, the energy that came with that. The words carry the energy of the, the, source that inspired Patricia with that and it's uh, that I am presence you know every person will take exactly what they need for where they are on their path now and they don't call it an activation for nothing each person <laughs> will be uplifted in some way and I'm grateful because I know I received a blessing as well yes thank you so much you're welcome Suzanne when was the moment when you first started communicating with spirits as a medium there was an exact, there was an exact meeting moment. See, I'm knocked off balance. I'm totally. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Activation. I, yeah. Connecting with others, loved ones has been a beautiful journey, but the, the most profound moment was when my own guides, who I call Sanaya, uh, made their presence known to me in 2010, right around the time of my birthday. And they said mm. that they would be working with me from that moment on. And they are the ones that have opened me up to new experiences and the awareness of who we really are. So it's it's an ongoing journey. And, and I love that, just as I said, you know, we're each on our unique path that we're, we're like flowers that blossom. And these, these activations are like the fertilizer because we can we can open up at different rates and yet we're all going to the same place towards the light. And so everybody has a team of guides. I encourage everyone to, to connect from the heart with your team, even if you're not aware of their presence yet, they are here, and then ask them to introduce you to the higher forces and, and simply enjoy the journey. Yeah, do you have an exercise for us, a, a quick one where yeah, it, we can it, connect it, with our guides or? It's just gonna be just a, actually just a, a more practical thing. Practical, yeah, perfect. Time. Yeah, I, I, it's a new thing that my guides inspired me with called AHA Moments Throughout the Day, where AHA is an acronym for pausing, making sure you're not driving, perhaps. And the first A stands for align, which is what we did so beautifully with Patricia there, aligning with you, this, this I am presence within you. How do you do that? Simply with your intention. Affirm, I am my I am presence in Patricia's words, or I am one with the one light. I am the light. Whatever feels good to your heart, feels truthful to you. Come into alignment with the breath, centering in the heart. The H stands for harmonize. So gratitude will get you there really fast. So just think of something you're grateful for, and that just brings you into this beautiful state of harmony with your higher self. And then the second A is attune to your higher self or any of these cosmic forces by asking the question, what do I need to know right now? And right away, you're showing I'm not only human because you're reaching out to something beyond your human self. And the insights that come in from these brief aha moments show you you're part of this one big web. Oh, I love that. That's so incredible. And we did that yesterday in the workshop, The Awakened Way. I highly recommend all of you looking up Suzanne and Patricia and following them and their work. So we'll put their websites and how to connect with them. 
So it's been such a pleasure connecting with you both and really experiencing how cosmic forces can shift our consciousness. Thank you, Patricia and Suzanne, for joining me today for the Global Oneness Summit. You're welcome. My privilege. It's, it's an honor. Absolutely. Thank you so much.